In this video, I'm going to show you some very quick and easy tips you can use while working with reverb in your tracks to make your track sounds cleaner, louder, and more real. There's basically two ways to work with reverb in a DAW. One is as an insert using the exact reverb plugin and putting it directly on a track, and the other is using a send and return. This is how an insert would work. Perhaps we want some more reverb on our drum track. We could just grab a reverb unit, mess with this, the settings down here, including most notably the dry wet, to make it more reverby or more dry. This is the way I see a lot of young producers start working out because it's the most simple way to get reverb on a specific track. It's also great for sound designers when you want to change the sound by using reverb as a tool. When I'm mixing a whole track though, I like to use reverb on a send and return. Ableton's default project actually already starts with the reverb unit on a send and return. This allows us to use a single reverb unit to affect our entire track if we want. It keeps CPU usage down and it also helps me keep my track more organized so if I know if I want less reverb on the drums, I simply need to turn down the send value rather than searching for the specific inline plugin and adjusting it. You can check new presets from the Ableton built-in reverb by hitting this swirly button here. It'll show up all the presets that Ableton comes with. There are lots of options for reverbs, but for this video, I'm just gonna use Ableton's built-in because it's pretty good. For this track, I would love a concert hall or that kind of sound. So let's take a look at some of these names that we have. I'm looking at rooms, which is a specific type of reverb. We have ambience, backbone, big room. Oh, so that's how we make big room house, guys. We figured it out, that was easy. Let's throw the big room preset on. And the way that we're gonna start hearing this reverb is by turning these send values here. The coolest thing about the way Ableton uses send and returns is we're able to solo the reverb send and just hear what it sounds like with specific tracks running to it. This is just the reverb we're about to listen to. I'll give us a little gain so we can really hear it. This is actually a pretty cool sound. This big room preset's not bad. And I'm slowly just dialing in the other instruments. Maybe there's a little too many drums here. So basically what I'm doing here is mixing the entire track again with just these send knobs. Let's get the horns in there. And let's give it a little bit of a boost just for the purpose of this video. I'm grabbing Ableton's built-in utility plugin. I'm just gonna give us a little 10 dB gain so we can really hear what this reverb sounds like. It's, let's boost it even more. I wanna hear this puppy. It's a little bit of a mess. And when we add it to the whole track, it's gonna be a real big mess. Let's hear it. I'll mute it, we'll hear it without. Clean, but kind of barren. With it, pretty messy. So some of the things that can result in a messy sound of reverb are two things can result in a messy reverb that I can think of right now. The wrong pre-delay time. Pre-delay is a knob right down here and it's on just about every reverb unit. It's the time before the reverb hits. Sometimes, when reverb or a track sounds cluttered, having a longer pre-delay can make it sound more natural. Other times, when we're using reverb as more of a sound designer production element, having no reverb, no pre-delay can really give us that feeling of the sound gelling together. Ableton's plugin doesn't let us turn off pre-delay, but it does get us down to half of a millisecond, which is basically nothing. I'm going to play this, the whole track, and adjust this pre-delay time to see if I can get something where it doesn't feel disjointed, but it feels a little bit more open. If we make it really hard, you'll hear it get kind of wonky. Hear how that's really, it's really delaying and sounding crazy. I'm going to push it to 20. Still feels disjointed, the hits are kind of staggered, so I'm gonna just pull the pre-delay back until we can get it. So right where the, 
<laughs> right where the preset started, I said 12 milliseconds was about what I landed on, 15 milliseconds. Now the other thing that's really cool about Ableton's reverb is the ability to do input processing, which lets us filter the high and low end before it gets into the reverb. This is the ultimate power move right here for shaping the way reverb sounds in your track. By cutting off the low end and possibly the high end too, you're able to really sculpt what signal the reverb works with. This allows us to have a much cleaner result. This technique has been used in the old school engineering days and it still works out um, today. I'm gonna use my favorite EQ, Pro Q2, rather than Ableton's built-in input processing because I have, feel like I have a little bit more control. Throwing an EQ before the reverb, very simple way to get much better control and cleanliness out of your reverb unit. Keep in mind it's super important that you're processing before the reverb. The idea is to make sure the reverb unit is doing as little work as possible. If, it's, if you're feeding in a ton of low end information and a ton of stuff you don't want reverb on, it's going to process it and cutting it after the fact isn't going to fix it. So check it out. I'll solo just the reverb now and let's cut the low end and you'll hear exactly how this cleans up super quick. See? Without it, really rumbling. And we're using a big room preset which sounds big to begin with. Another technique is to roll off the top. This will give it a more reverby sound. That really sounds like some awesome, realistic reverb. But it's not just the reverb unit on its own. It's the result of this EQ and us feeding the reverb specific data that we want it to process. We can even boost in this phase if we want to really bring out something, like those horns. Let's hear the whole track together now. I'll bring the reverb level down so we can't really hear it, we'll just add it to taste. That's right on this send value right here. The idea with reverb is to not, I mean I guess it's to taste, but my goal with reverb is to not make the track sound reverby. It's just to give a spot for all the different instruments to live. When a single reverb unit is doing all the work, I know that all the sounds are coming through the same virtual space, which is going to make the track sound more real. I feel like the drums have a little too much. I'm going to bring it back. The bass too is doing like, I, we don't need a lot of reverb on the bass. Pianos sound good. Right hand sounds a little heavier. There's a sound effect track that didn't get any juice. Let's give them the juice. Let's give them the juice, guys. If we want to see exactly how a particular track sounds with the reverb, we can just solo it. Ableton will keep the send and returns active. So now we're hearing the piano with the reverb. If we want to hear the piano without it, we just click this big A button, bypass the send. Without it, with it. Let's hear the whole track. So that's a very basic tip of working with reverb. Use it on a send and put an EQ before the reverb unit. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you a little bit with working with reverb in Ableton Live or in any DAW of your choice. Almost every DAW supports send and returns and I highly recommend using reverb in this way to keep your CPU usage down, to give your track an overhaul cohesion. And you know what? If you want to use some inline reverbs too, that's not a bad thing. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about production, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm Cutman. I'll see you in the next one.